Not even my skill in the plastic arts could create such perfect human figures. You will be wax figures with real souls. Now die in the name of art. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we are going to be examining a former enemy and master of wax, Galdino. Galdino is a thin and relatively frail looking man who was first introduced to us during the Little Garden arc. At this point in time, Galdino was a member of Baroque Works, a criminal organization led by former Warlord of the Sea, Sir Crocodile. As a result of his membership, Galdino was assigned a code name, that being Mr. Three, which to this day is how he is more commonly known amongst the fanbase. However, despite being part of a secret organization, Galdino wears his code number quite openly and obviously on his head via the use of a molded top knot. Galdino also thinks of himself as far above average in terms of intelligence, going so far as to believe that he is a master strategist. And I can't say that's entirely untrue, as it was admitted by Crocodile himself that Galdino was assigned the rank of Mr. Three due to his intelligence. But then again, when you take a look at the characters immediately above and below him, I'm not so sure that's a very high bar. In addition to this, Galdino also believes that he is quite the accomplished artiste, specializing in the medium of wax sculptures. Well, quite specifically, turning living people into sadistic wax statues. Galdino is able to accomplish this via the use of his devil fruit, the Doru Doru no Mi, a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to generate and control wax. And as a result of his artistic inclinations, Galdino received Miss Goldenweek as his agent partner in Baroque Works, who is a legitimately accomplished artist specializing in painting. Together, Galdino and Miss Goldenleak were dispatched to the island of Little Garden in order to engage the Straw Hat Pirates and Princess Vivi, who had previously defeated Mr. Five and Miss Valentine on Whiskey Peak. And while this goal was always in his mind, upon encountering the fighting giants Dory and Broggy, Galdino came up with a side plan to sabotage their battle and collect the 200 million berry bounty on their heads. And initially, Galdino's plan was quite successful. Although his act of sabotage sparked a hostile response from the Straw Hat Pirates, and a battle between the two groups began. With the assistance of Mr. Five, Miss Valentine, and Miss Golden Week, Mr. Three was able to entrap Vivi, Zoro, and Nami onto his quote-unquote artwork and commence the process of turning the three of them into wax statues. Galdino essentially did this by creating a wax cake-shaped candelabra type thing, and yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it, with a spinning dome full of burning candles on top. The idea being that as the dome spins, wax vapor slowly drifts downwards onto the targets, very, very eventually turning them into wax dolls. It's a highly convoluted process that shows Galdino's creative thought and strategic process, but it also highlights a major flaw in regards to his arrogance. Galdino thinks very highly of himself, so much so that the entire concept of having a backup plan is a bit foreign to him, leading him into a chaotic state when his wax candelabra was thwarted. Galdino then attempted to combat Luffy using his candle champion technique, whereby he encases himself in a wax suit to make up for his lack of physical ability by increasing his power and durability. However, this was also overcome and Galdino's final gambit was to create a multitude of wax clones, which Luffy easily saw through and swiftly defeated him. However, this was far from the end of Galdino in the series. He would next appear during the Alabaster arc, where he searched out his former boss Crocodile to personally apologize for his failure on Little Garden. However, a less than merciful Crocodile then decided to feed Galdino to his pet Banana Wani, also known as a Banana Gator. Galdino survived being ingested by encasing himself in wax and was freed when Sanji defeated the Banana Wani, and Galdino was subsequently forced to create a wax key to free the rest of the Straw Hats from a cell after being captured by Crocodile. Galdino was then promptly beaten unconscious and not seen until the end of the arc, where he was spotted listening to Vivi's farewell speech at Rainbase. Next up, Galdino popped into the series during Miss Golden Week's cover story, and after a whole host of shenaniganry involving former Baroque Works agents and the Marine Captain Hina, Galdino was captured and sent to the underwater prison, Impel Down. Quite specifically, he was sent to level 2 of Impel Down, the Wild Beast Hell, and eventually teamed up with both Luffy and Buggy to infiltrate and escape the prison. Although more emphasis definitely needs to be placed on the escape portion of that mission. Actually, at any given time, Galdino had no intention of heading down to further level with Luffy, and even conspired with Buggy to ditch Luffy and escape on their own. However, through a wide variety of comical coincidences, Galdino would find himself traveling all the way down to level 5, the Freezing Hell. Although shortly after entering this level, both Galdino and Buggy abandoned Wonkley, who was their comrade at the time, and somehow this duo made it all the way back up to level 2. 
On level 2, Galdino used his wax abilities to create keys to free the prisoners and start a riot. The idea being to create a distraction so that he and Buggy could escape. Eventually, Galdino's group was incorporated into Luffy's jailbreak squad, which included Galdino's former boss, Crocodile. And in what I can only describe as a shocking display, Galdino then teamed up with Luffy to face the Warden of Impel Down, Magellan. I say shocking because up until now, Galdino had very much been characterized by a strong tendency towards cowardice, especially when faced with a strong opponent. But here, Galdino showed a rare moment of courage and a desire to repay his debt to Luffy by using his wax abilities to allow Luffy to fight Magellan without touching the Warden's poison. And although this duo didn't even come close to defeating Magellan, they were able to buy enough time for the rest of the Jailbreak gang to acquire a marine battleship for their escape. And as the escaped prisoners sailed away from Impel Down, Galdino rather uncharacteristically shed tears for his former colleague Bong Clay, who seemingly sacrificed himself in order to open the gates of justice to allow them to escape. This showed that Galdino had evolved as a character from his initial cold and apathetic personality that was initially displayed during the Little Garden arc. However, Galdino would have little time to grieve as he was immediately flung into the Paramount War which was taking place on Marineford. Galdino was naturally outmatched by the incredibly strong and world-renowned combatants fighting all over the Marine base, so he switched to a more stealthy approach. In fact, Galdino disguised himself as an executioner and managed to make it all the way to Ace's execution platform with the intention of freeing him. It should be noted that he chose to do this in order to avenge Bong Clay, whom Galdino thought had been killed. Soon after, Galdino used his Devil Fruit powers to protect Ace from Sengoku's attack, as well as created a wax key to free Ace from his sea stone handcuffs, thus instantly making Galdino one of the most important figures in the entire Paramount War. But despite Galdino's gallant actions, Ace and Whitebeard were eventually killed, and Galdino fled from Marineford with Buggy and the remaining Impel Down prisoners. Later on, Galdino decided to join the Buggy Alvida Alliance, and was the first person to read a message from the world government that was inviting Buggy to become one of the seven warlords of the sea. After the time skip, it was revealed that Buggy accepted this invitation, and Galdino remained with him as part of the newly formed Buggy's Pirate Dispatch Company. Some more fun facts about Galdino. Galdino is one of only two characters thus far who have been closely affiliated with two of the seven warlords of the sea. Galdino having worked for both Buggy and Crocodile, while the other is Perona, who was associated with Gecko Moria and Dracul Mihawk. During his time with Baroque Works, Galdino had a personal ship, which was somehow powered by wax. Like many other characters in the series, Galdino has a unique speech pattern, choosing to end his sentences with the suffix Gane. This has no actual meaning, it's just an individual way of talking. And finally, a truly useless fact, Galdino's favourite brand of tea is Earl Grey. And that about does it for Galdino. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favourite, or subscribe, and please do comment with your own thoughts on Galdino. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.